Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten 774 here bringing you the next video in our walkthrough for Nancy Drew's Secret of the Old Clock. We have uh, quite a few things to do now. Let's see here. Or let's maybe check in with Jane now that we've just talked to Emily. So, is Emily alright? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No. You mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Emily said you were the only one who knew she had that jewelry. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry, it's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Is that your car I saw when I drove up the driveway? My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Was it open to the public? Nope, it was just his own private little course. Can you imagine? Wish I had money to throw around like that. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Hmm, interesting. What's in here? We haven't explored this area yet. Let's see, nicely decorated little parlor. I do like the artwork on the wall, it's very pretty. We... This is a game. Bard Bounce. A game based upon A Midsummer Night's Dream, a play by William Shakespeare. Do Shakespeare proud by using the arrows to move each man to the woman with whom he belongs. Remember, love is never easy. Whenever you move someone, he will keep going until he hits an obstacle, another character, or the end of the row. So plan ahead. Okay, so let's see. We need to get these characters to bump into their loves. I like the art on these. They totally look like, like the women look like elves and the men look like warriors from Lord of the Rings. Okay, so I can get this one to bump into the red guy here so the yellows can go together. What about if I do... Hmm... Maybe I can do the... Oh, I should do the green one there. Let's try that. So I'll bring this red guy all the way around. Move the green one up and the red one over. And then the green one can go down so that he'll slide into the green over here. Okay, but now how am I going to get this red? This is going to be the tricky one, I think. I need to get someone to stop here. Maybe... Hmm, I'm just trying to plan this out in my head. Uh... They only stop when they hit an obstacle or another character. So I kind of need like a character to stop right here. Or right here. But how am I going to do that? Because so this guy is pretty much stuck just going around the corners now. Unless I were to bump the yellow guy over. Then he's like, hey. Um, so now he's stuck there. But that's not going to help me, is it? Will it help me? Uh, not really. What if I... Okay, what if I did this? I push the blue guy there, and if I push the yellow guy all the way around... Because they were pretty easy to get into their spots. If I push the red guy all the way around... There we go. Okay, so he's in his spot now. Blue guy goes back to his spot. Now, how did I get the yellow guy in his spot? Is he gonna, just going to be stuck now? Oh no. See, I can push the blue guy over. Yellow guy will go down, and then blue guy will go over. Perfect. And then we win. 
Huzzah! What did we win? Keen. That's all we win? Just tells me Keen? Okay, well, good to know, I guess. Nice little confidence booster. You too can win a game. Let's see. Newspaper. Hobo sign language becoming widespread. As the number of homeless men drifting from town to town looking for handouts increases with hard times, so does the use of the peculiar signs and symbols they have developed to communicate with each other. To see these hobo symbols in action, you may well need to look no further than your own backyard. Hey, this one was outside the inn. A kind woman lives here. Oh, that's nice. So, somebody marked the building saying that a kind woman lived here. Like, <laughs> that's like time, I'm guessing. Clever Hans, what he taught his master and us. Late last century, a retired teacher named Wilhelm von Austen set out to prove that animals are far more intelligent than commonly believed, and that they are perfectly capable of adding, subtracting, even telling time provided they receive the proper education. He bought a horse called Hans and proceeded to teach him arithmetic as if he were a schoolboy, using carrots instead of a hickory stick to elicit the desired responses. Amazingly, within two years, Hans was able to give the answers to mathematical problems by pawing the ground. More amazingly, the horse was almost never wrong. Von Austin was convinced that he had indeed taught his horse arithmetic, and for years it seemed to everyone who saw Clever Hans in action that Von Austin was right. Of particular interest to the scientific community was the fact that the horse was able to give the correct answer even when Von Austin was not present, which ruled out the possibility that his master was perpetrating a hoax by giving him subtle hand or voice signals. But finally, a scientist named Oscar Funkst observed that Hans gave the correct answer, that is, he pawed the ground the correct number of times only when someone whom the horse could see knew the answer to the problem that had been posed. This meant that the horse was, indeed, reacting to visual cues. Eventually, Funks proved that Hans's cleverness lay not in his math skills, but in his uncanny ability to perceive tiny, involuntary body movements. When the pawing horse reached the correct answer, the people around him would react, albeit unconsciously. A slight nod of the head, a relaxing of the shoulders, a straightening of the back, all were cues which to Hans meant that it was time to stop pawing and enjoy the carrot that was sure to be forthcoming. Von Austin, who all along had unwittingly been providing his wonder horse with the correct answers, died five years later, far too disillusioned and humiliated to appreciate the invaluable lesson that his misadventure in equine education had inadvertently taught the rest of us. Thanks to Hans, we now know that what people do without being aware that they are doing it can often speak volumes. And thanks to his master, we know that if a man wants to believe that something is true badly enough, he'll often unconsciously find a way to make it true. But like Hans, the more observant we are, the more likely it is that we'll pick up on the cues that the believer is inadvertently providing us with, cues that will ultimately allow us, like Funks, to discern fact from fancy. Interesting. Not sure what that has to do with anything, but it's interesting. Nice little bench. Nice little fireplace. Looks like we can go over to it. Oh! There's a slider puzzle in this clock. Well, isn't that interesting? Goal being that we need to slide everything out of the way so this bird can make it to the other side. <laughs> Just made it more stuck. Is that right? Uh, okay, bird. How do you get out of here? Work with me here, birdie. I'm so confused. I need this yellow thing to move. But then I need the other gear to move, but I can't do both. Grr, this is confusing. I'm gonna get stuck here! Hmm. I'm sure there's a walkthrough online that tells you exactly how to do this, but I prefer to do it a little more naturally, as often as possible. Mm. Oh, got the bird over. Did that help at all? 
Does that allow me to do anything? No. Oh, birdie. It looks like a mockingbird or something. It's very colorful. This is a hard slider puzzle. I am very confused. Does that help? At all? No? Hmm. <laughs> I think the... idea here... There has got to be... Oh! 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 I did it! That's the one thing I was missing. I was just thinking there has to be one little step here that I am missing that is going to prevent me from solving this whole thing. And that had to be it. Because nothing else was working. Okay, but now what? Now I'm stuck again! Shoot! What do I do? Come on, bird. Can't you just, like, go down, like, one space or something? There we go. Okay. Got the bird out. Got the bird out. What what do I get? It cuckoos at me? Is that I it? What this mirror is doing in here? Oh, we get a mirror? Okay. I guess I'll take the mirror. All right, let's see. We should eat all the pies. We should go down this way. We already looked at the little mini golf course over there. Oh, oh. Uh, got it. Got it. Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. One metal key. Determine current resale value. Item 493. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Piece of paper blowing in the wind. Golf course is down that way. This must be Josiah Crowley's old house. What's this? Oh, we're gonna need a password before we can get in there. Well, it's good to know it's there. We'll keep an eye out for four-letter passwords. Topham School for the Study and Development of Paranormal Powers. Wow. I like the house. We'll just walk right in. Over here, Miss Drew. Find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. This must be Yuri. Oh, it's such a kitty. Why are your eyes so crossed and weird? Uh, okay, we need to find Yuri's toy. Cats always hit their toys under stuff. Oh, yep, here we go. See, that's exactly where my cat would push her mouse. Here you go, Yuri. You go, buddy. Oh, you so happy. Such a happy kitty. Oh, so cute. Okay, who are you? You must be Topham. How nice of you to drop by. And thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. How did you know who I was? If one is to teach others how to develop and use their paranormal gifts, it's only logical that one must possess such gifts oneself. Does that mean you can read minds or tell the future or what exactly? The paranormal includes telepathy or communicating by sending and receiving thoughts, extrasensory perception or perceiving that which cannot physically be seen or heard, and psychokinesis, using one's psychic energy to reshape or move objects. Jeepers, you can do all that? Yes. Well, on occasion. As I tell my students, increasing one's rate of success is simply a matter of practice. Does everyone have paranormal powers? To some degree, yes. The goal of the Topham School for the Study and Development of Paranormal Powers is to enable students to make the most of whatever gifts they have. 
I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. What I'd really like to do is talk about Josiah Crowley. Oh. I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. You're not trying to hide something, are you, Mr. Topham? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. Ah. I'm afraid I cannot really? speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brainwaves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. My brainwaves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Good luck and good day. How rude. Okay, well, we can do this pretty quick. It's just a bunch of word games, so there's a bunch of wets. The whole page is all wet. That <laughs> looks right. It's a 30s saying. What else do we got? Oh, dolled up. Doll up. Am I smart or what? Um, double cross. I'm getting there. Uh, dry up. That looks right. Big cheese. Am I smart or what? Yeah. Not too hard. So we'll give that to Mr. Topham, I think, in our next episode. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.